Hello designers, this is Angie from Ravener's Design Academy. Welcome back if you're subscribed and welcome here if you're new. Happy New Year! May 2021 be a joy-filled year to you and all your loved ones. Being able to generate an attractive interior visualization or 3D render can do wonders for a designer's career. These computer-generated images are the language of communication between a designer and a client or audience. Not to mention that it's becoming a mandatory skill in some countries if you want to get a job or freelance as an interior designer. CG or computer graphics, as it is, is becoming a huge part of our lives. <clears throat> Avengers. So in this video, I'll be walking you through an interior modeling and rendering workflow of a simple reading nook. And hopefully you can leave here with a few trips and tricks up your sleeve to improve your own workflow and create stunning interiors. Feel free to comment below what you want to see on the channel in 2021 and what kind of workflow would you be interested in learning. Just don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this every week. So without any further rambling, let's get started. I've modeled the shell of a reading nook and didn't do anything else to it other than apply the materials. I've saved a random scene and even rendered it on default settings. So this is basically how we all start our interiors. They always start out looking weird, but everything comes together slowly to make a beautiful shot in the end. This is the corner I want to work on. It's kinda inspired by some Pinterest images I've seen on my feed. So naturally, I want to angle my camera this way, so I'll start with the camera setup first. If we launch the asset editor and navigate to the render output rollout, turn on the save frame option and choose an aspect ratio that works for your scene, so you know what you'll be looking at once you render. I want to render a narrow image of a corner, so I'll go to the 4 to 5 portrait. In my SketchUp workspace, the camera started looking weird because that aspect ratio just distorted my field of view. To fix that, I'll click on the magnifying glass icon and that displays the field of view value in the bottom left corner of the window. It's 80 degrees, which is too wide or too narrow, depends on how you see it. I usually start at 65 degrees, which I just type into my keyboard and work my way down to 45 degrees. I stop when the angle starts looking natural, like it's taken with a camera. For a more in-depth tutorial on camera setup, check the description below this video. Now that my camera setup is done, time to add some final touches and save the view as a scene. Just keep in mind that as you continue to populate the model, you can change your mind about the angle and change it later. It doesn't have to be the perfect angle from the first try, you only need an approximate direction to point your camera. Here's the random view I started with. And here is the new one. Quite a difference, eh? Now let's give this scene a quick test render and analyze it for our next step. Angle seems fine. But the lighting is a complete disaster. Too many highlight burns are happening. It's on the sky, wood, walls, not to mention this fencing is coming out a bit too aggressive. That might be a displacement issue though. For now, the sore thumb here is the lighting and the harsh sunlight, so let's fix that. In the asset editor, we'll head to the lighting tab and try to fix the sunlight. The only thing I need to do now is soften the lights up a bit, and that is done via the size multiplier. A bigger sun means softer sun rays, and my favorite value for a noon sun is 5. The rest of the parameters are not required in this workflow, but if you want a tutorial on different sun models, leave a comment below. Moving on to the materials tab, I'll adjust the weathered wood materials so it doesn't look so aggressive. As for the highlight burns, you can see them more clearly if you click the force color clamping button and you can adjust the amount of highlight burns from the color corrections control by clicking the show corrections control button in the frame buffer window. Enable the exposure correction tab and adjust the highlight burn slider till you minimize the amount of burns in your image. Don't set it to zero, that just washes out your whole image and makes it look flat. 
There, I just removed all the burns from the wall for now and I'll leave the rest for when I adjust the lighting completely. Taking a another look at the image, I noticed that the bump map on the fogged glass is a little bit too rough, so I'll just hop back real quick and make the bump texture smaller. Now that it's all fixed, let's see about adding in a background instead of having a blank sky. I always save any backgrounds that I create as components to import directly into my models whenever I need them. Once I import a background, I move it and scale it to suit my scene. Next step is to enable the frame buffers history so I can preview the steps I took. That's just something I like to do sometimes, it's not necessary. And then I'll run another test render. From this second quick test render, I'll just see what needs to be done next. The highlight burns are still there, obviously, so I'll just reduce the highlight burn value again. And I want to change the angle a bit so it's a little bit closer to the ground. This will of course result into lowering the outdoor fence a bit so we can get a peek at the sky and trees in the background through the window. This looks much better now. It's time to populate the scene with some furnishings. Like some indoor greenery because I can't live without them. A cozy window seat cushion. Let's throw a pillow on the floor. Some books to read. And a mug of coffee. I love coffee. The items here are a little scarce, but they convey the idea that of this being a reading nook in the shape of a window seat. Now that we have these elements here, I'm not really fond of the camera angle anymore because everything looks a little bit cramped. So to fix that, I'll give myself some room to space everything further apart and eliminate the dead space on the left because it's just a blank wall and favor the view outside the window a bit more to the right. If you want to know more about all these little shortcuts that I use to speed up my modeling workflow, check the links in the description below the video. There's a video there for you. Since the model now has a little bit more geometry, I'll exempt the glass from being overridden when I turn on the material override option. This allows me to render quicker to check how the light and shadows play a role in the scene. And a nifty trick to compare between a before and after is to enable history and then assign A and B roles to two different images. You can then use the slider to go back and forth between images. Cool, huh? With the material override on, I'll just give this scene a quick test render to see where we stand now. The render came out a bit too dark here, so I tried to fix it off camera and the background texture was the problem. I disabled the can be overridden option for the material of the background and it worked like a charm. Okay, first, obvious problem is that the trees look too burned out by the sun. Like, they literally look crisped. Second problem is the sun itself. I rarely like how the V-ray sun affects an interior, unless it was under a certain circumstance. It often washes out details or just makes the scene look too fake. 
So to fix that problem, I'll just disable the sun altogether and I'll just use GI as my main source of light. Under the environment rollout, I'll just set a sunny HDRI as the background texture, then copy it to GI. Next, I'll enable all the other parameters, copy the GI's white color as their color, and then paste the HDRI to them as well. To test all of these out, I'll go for an interactive render to adjust how bright everything will be. To be honest, I've never done this method of lighting with an outdoor view included in the scene, so it took some testing. I'll speed through it in editing and then show off the final results and their values. Here are the final results, and I must say this is way better than the direct sunlight action going on. The light coming in is a bit too cool, but that can be adjusted later. This says cozy, and I want cozy. I like cozy. As for the values used, here they are. GI is amped up to 50, but the rest are smaller values since they don't do much to lightening up the scene, but rather how the light affects the scene. Now for the actual hard work, the materials of these components. These are all imported directly from 3D Warehouse, and it's time to add my own personal touch to them. Starting off with the tree, I need to add a bit more of a bit more life into it and I also need the textures to be present on my drive for it to render correctly. To fix that, I'll just save a copy of the texture on my drive and then re-import it into my scene. Next, I'll add in a bit of shine to make it look more natural. And then I'll do a makeshift bump map so the shine doesn't look too glassy. I repeat these steps for all the textures included with the tree before moving on to the next object. Next up, we have the dirt and plant pot. These two materials will be completely replaced. For a more detailed tutorial on how to do that, check the description below the video. There's another video there for you. The pillow, cushion, and blanket textures are all correctly mapped. So I won't be replacing the materials themselves, so I won't have to remap everything. I'll just change the diffuse maps and add in some specular or reflection maps and some bump maps that I've previously created using the app Materialize. Again, for the sake of this video's length, I'll link a detailed tutorial on creating textures from images via Materialize and what Materialize is exactly below this video. A quick hint, this app is easy to use and is free. We love a free handy piece of software here. One eternity later. Oh, that was a lot of work. It'll come out worth it, though. Always remember to save your work as you go along, even if you have autosave turned on. It's a lifesaver. No pun intended. Books have reflections, right? Then how about we add those in and fix any broken textures included? Last but not least, the coffee mug. I'll add some reflections to the porcelain and pour some coffee into it. Some coffee steam will look gorgeous when I add it in post-production. Now all that's missing is to add a bit of greenery in the outdoor area, so I'll import a simple bush to add that little green pop of color in contrast with the shabby faded fence. To add some realism to that bush, I'll just be adding some diffuse reflection to the material. Simple yet effective. Just remember to add less reflection to outdoor plants than indoor plants, since outdoor landscaping gets exposed to dust, dirt and other elements that can diffuse that reflection and indoor plants are not affected by it. Now that the hard work is done, clean up your model and make yourself a cup of coffee or tea while you do a quick test render. Nice! This came out 
not too shabby, right? Totally worth all that hard work. Just some notes before doing a final render would be that the fence material needs a bit of adjusting displacement wise and the plant pot needs a different color. Now we're ready for a final render. One last thing before actually starting the final render, I want to adjust the color correction value so I'm all, so I'm all set. I'll increase the exposure to one so my shadows aren't so dark. I'll also turn on the lens effect so my reflections look a little bit livelier. As for the cool tone of the image, I'll just adjust the white balance and the corrections control so the scene is a little bit warmer. There we go, I think we're ready. Here's the end result, without any post-production. Comment below if you want to see a post-production tutorial using this scene. That's it for today's video guys, if you have any requests or suggestions, you can of course, drop them in the comments below because I read and reply to every single comment. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for watching, amazing humans. Stay happy and safe.